Welcome to the five minute podcast for musicians and Gig Faster TV on YouTube. I'm Craig Kelly, your host from Gig Faster, and today we're going to look at how music publishing companies work. And before we get started, I wanted to just let you know that if you're looking to book gigs or promote your music or submit your music to record labels, Gig Faster has you covered. All you have to do is go create a free trial, start, create your profile, and select which record labels, uh, venues, and where you want to promote your music, and we'll do the rest. Uh, it's free to start, so go check it out. All right, right into it. How music publishing companies work. Now, like this is information that, I mean, people make tons of money on publishing, on their music. Like if you look, I mean, if you don't know this, the people that really get paid in music are the songwriters and it's through publishing. So like Michael Jackson ended up buying the whole Beatles catalog right from under Paul McCartney's feet. Like he was sitting right next to him, I believe, and he bought it. And because Paul McCartney told him money, the music, it, the money in music is in the song rights, in, in owning the songs and the publishing. So it's big money to be made. I mean, so write your songs, write, 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 write. And, um, it, you know, this is where you can get paid. Now, learning how publishing companies work is really, it's something you have to at least be familiar with. Because if you're not, then there's a good chance that if you have something good, you you, you could just you could just end up have getting a, a bad deal, okay? So, but this is the thing: music publishing companies they they actually handle a lot of information like um, administrative stuff, like registering your copyrights so you're protected with your songs and auditing record companies and licensees who's using your song so that you're actually getting paid for them using it um, and also negotiating license and and even collecting um, some mo collecting money for you so um, they do a lot of things for you like that and they also can help sell your songs to singers songwriters uh, record companies, TV shows, movies, um, and and that and that's great because they might have connections that you don't have, um, but you know they might help get your song released by a major artist. There might be like somebody's looking for songs, and you know they think that your song's good for that. So there you go. Um, and like. I use an example in the blog post. I'll have a link in the description to the blog post for this episode. Um, Adele's song, Someone Like You, has earned over $800,000 in royalties. Like $800,000 for one song. And I, honestly, that is not even accurate anymore. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of old. That's old data that I could find. It's the oldest data I could find on the information about. It. And I honestly, like she's made like over a million dollars. So let's imagine this a little off topic from the article episode is that you write a Christmas song and every year they, they play that song. Mar think Mariah Carey. Think um, White Christmas. Those people, yeah, that's like great long-term passive income. What's passive income? That's income that you create something, you create, write your song, and then you don't have to do anything else with it. You just keep collecting the money. It's like your job is done. Well, no, you want to make sure you're constantly promoting yourself. But that's passive income, and that's great. That's what really you want to do. I, I I go off track just a little bit here too. It's like people work for retirement. Like all they want to do is like, oh, I work, work, work. Yeah, I retire in 10 years. I retire. Then I can do what I want. And I'm like, I don't even know why you would ever not do what you want. Life is short. You don't know when your time is up. But for me and a lot of other people, retirement 
is actually when you're able to do what you want to do. So if you can do what you're already doing, well then who cares about retirement? I mean, I want to be doing what I'm doing when I'm 90 years old. Why not? If I'm having fun with it, that's great, you know? And passive income, when you're getting money coming in like that, like as in music publishing, you that's passive income that allows you to do what you really want to do. So if you want to write songs and you get some passive income coming in, you just keep writing songs, keep getting more of that income, then uh, you're you're on the right track. I mean, you don't need to retire. It's 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 in the process. You just want to keep going with it. So so let's let's get into this some more. Like, what's the difference between music publishing companies and performance rights organizations? Um, actually, I'm going to step back a second. One of the things. And I stress this a lot in this podcast and, and now on the TV is that YouTube is that um, gig faster TV on YouTube. I know I'm, it's not like I don't know, understand what YouTube or TV is. <laughs> Nobody watches TV anymore, right? So you have to be on YouTube. Anyway, I stress this a lot that record labels, music publishers, venues, they, they I mean, all these people... Let's, let's just stick with record labels and publishers. Like they want to see that you're already doing it yourself. You're already successful. So for music publishing, like really the best way to learn how music publishing works is to do it yourself. Uh, I highly recommend CD Baby because um, they'll handle a lot of dis distribution for you. Like they distribute it everywhere and they make sure you get paid. I mean, I've gotten paid from them several times for my music, you know? And honestly, I'm not even getting pl played like all these other people. I mean, you're getting performance, you're getting like paid for performances, like when people are streaming your songs. Um, anyway, I write for CD Baby on their blog, on the DIY blog. So you might have seen that before, but I recommend them for distribution f for that. Um, that's one way to get started, kind of start learning about it, but you really need to start doing it yourself. You need to copyright your songs. You don't want anybody like stealing your songs. Don't be stealing other people's songs. There are proper ways you can go about using other people's songs and beats and just buy the license and you're 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 good. Now, get the lowest license you can get, and then if your song blows up, that's fine. You know, it's going to be good. They'll be happy about that too. You guys can negotiate all that stuff. So, anyway, if you for a music publishing company, you got to realize that if you're not doing it yourself, somebody else is collecting the money too. So, music publishing is. It could be like 50-50. So if you make a dollar on your song, they get 50 cents. And as BMI, which which is a performance rights organization, will point out, they might not have your best interest in with your songs either. I mean, you're just like a little number to them unless you get somebody that really thinks your stuff's great. So, you know, that's just kind of like, that's why you got to do it yourself. Start, just, you got to do this stuff. I don't know how many times I got to tell everybody, like, if you want something to be, to get done, do it. If you want to learn how to do it, don't wait on everybody else. Book your own gigs, promote your music, and, you know, submit to independent labels. You're going to get feedback. You're going to be like, hey, you need to switch this. You need to do this. You need to do that. It's like, that's great. I got a showcase. I wasn't even a showcase. It was just dumb luck. We had some, a record exec, in a club that I was playing at and I was young and naive and I this was a while ago I mean it was a long time ago and it was like I was just so excited I was beside myself I'm like oh man maybe this is it man we got our chance we're you know we're gonna do this and I I just I was like a puppy dog like saying hey what do you think what do you think what do you think, what do you think? and I'm like thinking man a totally wrong way to go about it and it's it's just getting feedback from somebody like 
in, in a situation like that is so invaluable. Like, if you look desperate, nobody wants somebody that looks desperate. Confident, yeah. Arrogant, no. But you have to get out there and you have to do it. You know, they want to see you being successful on your own. And honestly, I wasn't ready to be signed to a major label at the time. I still needed to hone my craft and get the package, complete package together and good before they could take me to the next level. Okay. So now let's get into music publishing companies versus performance rights organizations. Like music publishing companies will help you legally register your songs and get them distributed or sold both nationally and internationally. And performance rights organizations ensure that you get paid when your songs are performed or broadcast. And they also give you a lot of other stuff like the education and you can get like insurance through them, like a group insurance and, you know, professional discounts and stuff. Now, both help you focus on protecting your music and getting paid. But they're two different things. And I know they seem, I only reason I bring that up is because it's like, wait, I'm already a part of BMI or, you know, ASCAP and all that. Why do I like, what do I even care about music publishing companies? Well, they're different. They're two different companies and you'll need both. You know, it'd be best to have both register your songs with BMI or ASCAP or one of the other performance rights organizations and then try to get your songs. Now, I know I've kind of been everywhere with this and this is a five minute podcast for musicians and it's like, I don't even know, 12 minutes. <laughs> My goal is to keep it short and sweet. And I just, you know, when I'm doing it, I think of other things and stuff. But anyway, we created a how-to guide to for getting started publishing your music. And I have a link in the description. You can go grab that for free and, you know, start making some money, some passive income with your music today. Hey, you know, I know you write songs and you write great songs you work hard on it you practice and you know you get get with your band you practice and and you, you know you try to promote your music you do everything you can you know and the hard part is getting noticed and that's why I created Gig Faster because I all the experience I've had I've been able to book gigs with Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Gary Hoey, Pat Benatar uh, other Grammy Award winning artists. Um, it's just, the reason is, is because I have this experience and I have it for, I want to share this information, right? I still perform, but it's not what I want to do anymore full time, you know? It's, it's like, I want to help other people at this point. I want to pass it on. Um, so that's why I built Gig Faster. It has over 6,000 venues. We have tons of independent record labels and we have tons of places to promote your music. And we do it the right way. We do it through email and we contact them the correct way. We don't spam them. We don't hit them up too often. You have to know the timing and what to say and how to do it. And that's what Gig Faster is. So you can go and start your trial and then put your information in and you you choose who you want to submit to and we'll reach out to them at the proper time and with the right content so that you don't get ignored and you get noticed for your music so go to gig faster and start your free trial today and remember if you want to succeed you can't quit ever <laughs>